Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. Today we make a collared sweater. Been feeling the homely vibe, so I wanted to continue that theme and share a sweater that's perfect for keeping you warm on those frigid nights. Speaking of frigid nights, we've got hundreds of modern sweaters to keep you toasty on those evenings with more on the way, so consider clicking the bell to subscribe and you'll never miss an upload. Also, do me a huge favor and give this video a thumbs up if you like it, or two thumbs down if you don't. Either way, it's a great way to show support so I can keep putting out free tutorials every Wednesday and Sunday. Now it's time to get on the show, so without further ado... For this project, any Category 4 yarn will work, but I use a total of 600 grams of yarn, and that's 1200 yards if you're stateside. As for the tools, a 6mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order. And enter this week's padding giveaway by telling us the last time you went grocery shopping and what did you get? Haven't been in a while, but my last grocery delivery had the best roast beef I've ever had. Details for the giveaway down below. We're using four stitches for this project, and they'll be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch. Single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet. This tutorial is for size small, but you can adjust it for your size, and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this top started, we're first going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're all going to grab our 6mm hook, and we're all going to start by making an odd number chain that reaches from the top of our shoulder down to where we want the bottom of the sweater to be. Now I need mine to be just about 18 inches or 46 centimeters, so I'm going to start by making a chain of 69. And now that we have our chain, we're going to block off that last chain and do a chain 3. There's 1, 2, 3. Those three chains don't count as a stitch, that's just our turning chain, and what we're going to do from here is yarn over, preparing for a double crochet, and we're going to double crochet into that chain that we blocked off, or the fourth chain from our hook. So bring our hook down into that chain, insert, yarn over, pull through. Shut off three loops on our hook, so yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Let's do one more. Yarn over, insert your hook, into that next chain, and pull through. We're going to yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. Continue to put one double crochet into every chain. Now that we've made our way all the way down with our first double crochet row, we're now going to get started on our next row, which is going to be a Suzette stitch row, so let's get that started. Getting started on our Suzette stitch row, we're always going to do a chain one and flip your work. Now, a Suzette stitch is going to be one single crochet and one double crochet into the same stitch, so let's get that started. Start by finding that last stitch that we have from our previous row, and we're going to start with a single crochet, so insert your hook into there. We're going to yarn over, pull through that loop. Should have two loops on our hook, so yarn over, pull through two. There's our single crochet, and then one double crochet into that same stitch, so yarn over, insert your hook into that same stitch, yarn over, pull through. 3 loops on our hook, so yarn over, pull through 2, yarn over, and pull through 2. Now that is our first Suzette stitch set. Now we're going to continue to do this, making our way all the way down the row. So to get started on our next set, we're going to need to skip that following stitch, and then into the stitch right after that, one single and one double crochet. Now we're skipping that stitch because if we accidentally work into there, we're going to be increasing, because this double crochet counts as this stitch count right here. So we're going to skip this one, and into the following, insert with one single and one double. So there's a single crochet, and then into that same stitch, one double crochet, and all together we should have one, two sets all finished up. Let's do one more and I'll let you guys do the rest on your own. So always skip the following stitch, and then into the next, insert with one single crochet, and then into that following stitch, one double crochet. 
Continue to do our Suzette stitches, making our way all the way down. And I'll meet you guys back when I have just two stitches left. I've just made my way all the way down with my row two or my Suzette stitch row. And now what we're going to do is close this off. So we're going to half double crochet into the last stitch from our previous row. So we all should have two stitches left. Like I said in the previous clip, this double crochet will count as this stitch count. So into that last one, we're going to yarn over, insert your hook into that stitch with a half double crochet. So pull through, yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. Now our Suzette stitch row is all finished up. Now for the remainder of this piece, it's going to be a two row repeat. So a double crochet row and then a Suzette stitch row. So I'm just gonna get started on the next two rows with you guys and let you guys do the rest on your own. So our row three is going to be a double crochet row. So start with a chain three and flip our work. And since this is our shoulder portion, we aren't going to be doing any increases or decreases. So just make your way down, putting one double crochet into every stitch. Let's do the next one. Yarn over into that next stitch, one double crochet, and then into that following another double crochet. I'll meet you back at the end of this row. So our double crochet row is all finished up or our row number three. Our next row is going to be a Suzette stitch row and it's gonna be a repeat of our previous Suzette stitch row. So I'm just gonna get that started off with you guys. So start every Suzette stitch row off with a chain one and flip your work. We're going to find the first stitch from our previous row and we're gonna insert with one single crochet and then into that same first stitch with one double crochet. And that's our first Suzette stitch set. Let's just do one more. So skip the next stitch because this double crochet counts as this stitch count. And then into that following stitch, insert with a single and then with a double crochet. And that's it. We're going to continue to skip one stitch and then into the following, put one single and one double crochet, making our way all the way down until we have two stitches left. So our fourth row or our Suzette stitch row is nearly finished. We should all have one, two stitches left and all we're gonna do is half double crochet into that last stitch from our previous row. So yarn over, skip the following stitch and then into that last stitch insert with one half double crochet and that is it. From here the next row is going to be a double crochet row. So chain three, flip our work and put one double crochet into every stitch. At the end of that row, do a chain one, flip your work and make your way down with the Suzette stitches, making sure that we end on our half double crochet, just like how we just did. We're gonna keep repeating these two rows with no increases and no decreases until we get the shoulder portion that we like. So placing the first row that we did about two inches past the tip of our shoulder, repeating these two rows until this reaches the base of our neck and we must end on a Suzette stitch row. I'll meet you guys back once we have that section all finished up so we can get started on the neckline. All right, so I am back and I have just finished up my shoulder portion. I have a total of 16 rows. My width is just about six and a half inches or 17 centimeters. And now we can start working on the decrease half of our neckline. So what we're first going to do is insert our stitch marker into an even numbered stitch right where we want the curve of our neck hole to start. So just to let you guys know, I've inserted my stitch marker into the 12th stitch from the top. And this is just about three and a half inches or nine centimeters. And the top is going to be the opposite end from our working yarn. And just as a really quick tip, our stitch marker will be into a double crochet stitch from our previous row since we all should have ended right after Suzette's stitch row. Now our next row is going to be a double crochet row, but now we're gonna do some decreases. So from here, all we're gonna do, since we all should have ended along the bottom, we're gonna do a chain three, flip our work, and then put one double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last three stitches right before our stitch marker so we can decrease together. All right, so we have just put one double crochet into every stitch and we have left one, two, three stitches right before our stitch marker and now we're going to do a decrease of three. So to get that started, we're gonna yarn over and start by inserting your hook into that third to last stitch before our stitch marker, yarn over and pull through. Also insert your hook into that second to last stitch, pull through, and then lastly, into that last stitch that we have right before our stitch marker and pull through. Now all together, we should have one, two, three, four, and five loops on our hook. So what we're gonna do is yarn over, pull through four, yarn over, pull through two, and that is how we do our decrease with our double crochets. 
Now the next row in a row sequence is a Suzette stitch row, but we are not going to be doing any decreases into that row. So just like how we did the shoulder, do a chain one, flip your work, then make your way all the way down doing our Suzette stitches, remembering to end our Suzette stitch row with a half double crochet. And at the end of the row, do a chain three, flip your work, and then put one double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last three because I'd like to decrease with you guys one more time. All right, so we are back and we are just about finished with our third row for the decrease side of our neckline. And what we're going to do is do another decrease. So we should have all left one, two, three stitches. So what we're gonna do, just like how we did the previous one, is we're going to yarn over, insert our hook into that third to last stitch, and pull through. Also insert your hook into that second to last stitch, pull through, and then into that last stitch, pull through. Should have one, two, three, four and five loops on our hook. So just yarn over, pull through the first four loops, leaving two loops on our hook, and then yarn over, pull through two. And like I said, we are not going to be decreasing into the Suzette stitch rows, so chain one, flip our work, and then make your way all the way down with our Suzette stitches, closing off our row with a half double crochet. And we're just going to keep repeating our two previous rows until our work can reach the middle of our chest, making sure that we end right after a double crochet row. I'll meet you guys back once when I have the first half of my front panel all finished up. All right, so I am back with the first half of my neckline, which was all decreases into the double crochet rows. We ended on a double crochet row, and now we're ready to get started on our middle row, which is going to be a Suzette stitch row with no increases and no decreases. But just to let you guys know, I have a total of 23 rows. Now just this decrease portion for my neckline is about three inches or eight centimeters, and now my total width is about 10 inches or 25 centimeters. Since we're here, we're going to do our middle row, which is a Suzette stitch row. So just chain one, flip our work, and then make our way all the way down doing our Suzette stitches, just like how we've been doing all of our previous Suzette stitch rows, making sure that we end on a half double crochet. And then after this middle row, we're gonna get started on the increase side of our neckline. So do a chain three, flip our work, and then put one double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last one, because we're gonna need to do an increase of three together. All right, so we are back. We have just finished up our middle Suzette stitch row, and then we made our way all the way back up with our double crochet row, leaving that last stitch. Now into that last stitch, we're gonna be doing an increase of three because on this other side, we did a decrease of three. So all we're gonna do is yarn over and insert our hook into that last stitch with three double crochets. So there's my first into that same last stitch with my second, and then into that same last stitch with my third. So all together, we should have three double crochets into that last stitch. And our next row is going to be a Suzette stitch row. So chain one, flip our work, and then make our way all the way down with our Suzette stitches with no increases and no decreases. At the end of the row, do a chain three, flip our work, and then put one double crochet into every stitch, leaving the last one, because we're gonna increase together once more. All right, so we are back with the third increase row for our neckline. We did our first double crochet row with an increase of three along the end, our Suzette stitch row, and then we are just about to finish off our second double crochet row, leaving the last stitch, and we're just gonna do another increase of three together. So just like the previous double crochet row, we're gonna yarn over, insert your hook into the last stitch with one double crochet, into that same last stitch with a second double crochet, and then same last stitch with a third double crochet. And from here, we're just going to keep repeating these two rows. So a Suzette stitch row, and then a double crochet row with an increase of three into that last stitch for the same amount of rows that we have for our decrease side, making sure that we are not including that middle Suzette stitch row that we did. So go ahead and get all of this done, and I'll meet you guys back along the other side so we can finish the front panel off with our shoulder. All right, so the increase side of my neckline is all finished up. Just this little portion that I have right here was three inches or eight centimeters, and I now have a total width of 13 inches or 33 centimeters. Now, all we're gonna have to do is finish this up with our shoulder portion. And the first thing that we're gonna have to do is make a chain for the same amount of stitches that we skipped on this side. So if you guys have my numbers, I inserted my stitch marker into the 12th stitch. So along this end, I'm going to be making a chain of 12. And now that we have our chain, we are going to block off that last chain and do a chain one. And the next row in a row sequence is going to be a Suzette stitch row. So into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, 
you're going to insert with one single crochet and then into that same chain one double crochet and then from here we're going to maintain our Suzette stitches making our way all the way down so let's just do the next set together we're going to be skipping that next chain and then into the following chain we're going to insert with one single crochet one double crochet and that is it from here we're just going to make our way all the way down with our Suzette stitches with no increases and no decreases making sure that we end on a half double crochet row just like how we've been doing then our next row will be a double crochet row with no increases and no decreases now we're just going to keep repeating those two rows for the same amount of shoulder rows that we have on this side over here and when we have the same amount of rows do a chain up of one and cut and then I'll meet you guys back so we can get started on the back panel. All right, so we are back and we have just finished up our second shoulder portion. I did do a chain up one and cut because I had the same amount of rows as my other side. And just to let you guys know, I have a total of 19 and a half inches, or that's 50 centimeters. Now that we have the front panel all finished up, we're going to be doing the same thing that we did here, minus the next scoop for the back panel. So I'm just going to talk you guys through it because it's going to be super simple. Start off by making the same chain that we made when we started off our front panel. If you guys have my numbers, I made a total chain of 69. And then we're going to do a double crochet row and then a Suzette stitch row. And then we're just going to make our way all the way across for the same amount of rows that we have as the front panel with absolutely no increases and no decreases. So just so that you guys know, I had a total of 47 rows. So I will meet you guys back once when I have the entirety of my back panel all done and then we can see my shoulders. All right, so I'm back and the entirety of my back panel is all finished. Like I said, we don't have a neck hole and we do have the same amount of rows as our front panel. So now what we're going to do is seam our shoulders together. So we're going to start by placing our front panel on top of our back panel and we're going to insert our hook into the corner of the front panel and then also into the corner of the back panel. Once we have that, we're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. And now from here, we're going to alternate between two single crochets into every side double crochet and then one single crochet into every side Suzette stitch row. So let's get that started. Now the first side row that we have right here, it should be a double crochet. So all we're going to do is insert a hook into that top loop of our first double crochet row into the front panel and then find that same top loop into the back panel, making sure it's worked in through the side of our double crochet. And then we're going to single crochet them together just like that. Now we're going to be doing one more into the same side double crochet rows and it should be a little bit easier because they should be gathered. So we're going to start by inserting our hook into that side double crochet within the first row within the front panel and then into that same side double crochet within the back panel and then single crochet just like that. Now our next row should be a side Suzette stitch row and we're just going to be putting one single crochet into that side row making sure we're working in through both the front and back panels. Let's do that again. We're going to insert our hook into that top loop that we have for our side Suzette stitch row within the front panel and find that same side loop within the back panel with just one single crochet. And we're just going to do one more set. So start by finding that next double crochet row within the front panel and insert your hook. And then find the same double crochet row within the back panel and insert your hook into there with a single crochet. And then we're gonna be doing one more. So into that same loop into the front panel and same loop into the back panel and single crochet. And just do the next one. It's our side Suzette stitch row. So insert your hook into that top loop and then into the same top loop within the back panel and then single crochet. And that's it. We're gonna continue to do this until we don't have any more side rows left to work into into the front panel. Do a chain up one and cut and then do the same thing that we just did here on the other side. All right, so now that we have finished up seaming both of our shoulders, we're gonna start working on the side seam. So the first thing we're going to want to do is make sure that our work is still flipped wrong side out meaning the seam that we have for the shoulder is faced outwards because we want all of our seams to be along the same side. And then we're going to insert our stitch marker into any stitch from the top, as long as it's in multiples of three, right where we want our armhole to start. So I've inserted my stitch marker into the 24th stitch from the top, and that's just about seven inches or 17 centimeters. And now from here, we're going to do another single crochet seam for the side panel. So let's all start by inserting our hook into the corner stitch of the front and also into the corner stitch of the back panel. Insert your yarn onto your hook. We're going to pull through and then do a chain up of one to secure. 
And from here, we're just going to be putting one single crochet into every stitch, making sure we're working in through both the front and back panel. So let's get that started. Start by finding that first available stitch within the front panel and insert your hook. We're going to find that next available stitch into the back panel and insert your hook and then just single crochet them together. And that's it. Let's do it as one more. Into that next stitch into the front panel, insert your hook and then into the next stitch into the back panel, insert your hook and single crochet. And from here, that's it. We're going to keep doing this, making our way all the way up to our stitch marker, do a chain up a one and cut, and then repeat everything that we just did here on the other side. All right, so now that everything is all synced together, we're ready to get started on our sleeve. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is make sure that our work is now flipped right side out. So all of our seams are going to be along the inside. And we're going to start by inserting our hook into the stitch that's nearest to our side seam. We're going to insert our yarn onto our hook pull through and we're all going to start by making an odd number chain the length that we want our sleeve to be keeping in mind that we will have a cuff as well so i need my sleeve to be just about 15 and a half inches or 39 centimeters so i'm going to start by making a chain of 49. and now that we have our chain we're going to do a double crochet row so start by blocking off that last chain and do a chain three now that chain three doesn't count as a stitch, that's just our turning chain, and we're going to prepare for a double crochet by yarning over. And into that chain that we blocked off, or the fourth chain from our hook, we're going to insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, and pull through two. There's our first double crochet, let's just do one more, yarn over, into that next chain, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, and we're going to be putting one double crochet into every chain. So we have just made our way all the way down with our double crochet row and now we need to connect it into the base. So all we're going to do is count up one, two stitches. Into that second available stitch into the base, we're going to insert our hook, yarn over, and pull through everything to close off this first double crochet row. Now we are going to continue our row sequence of a double crochet row and a Suzette stitch row. So to work our way up to our next Suzette stitch row, we're just going to slip stitch up that next available stitch. So insert your hook into there, yarn over, pull through everything, and flip your work. And there's not going to be any increases or decreases for our sleeve, so we're just going to make our way all the way down with our Suzette stitch. So since I just finished up the first one, let's do just one together. I just finished up my first. We're going to continue to skip that following stitch, and then into the next, a single crochet, and then a double crochet, making sure that we end this row with a half double crochet, just like how we did for the body. And at the end of the row, do a chain three, flip your work, and continue to put one double crochet into every stitch. And I'll meet you back once we reach the base so we can connect it just once more. All right, so we've made our way down with our row three or our second double crochet row. We're just gonna connect it into the base together and let you guys keep repeating these two rows until we don't have any more stitches left. So since I've just did my last double crochet for this row, we should be right next to the base. And just like the previous row, what we're going to do is count up the next two available stitches. So there's one, and then there's two. Into that second stitch, we're going to insert our hook, yarn over, pull through everything to secure our double crochet row. And our next row is a Suzette stitch row again. So just to get started on that row, slip stitch up just one stitch into the base, flip our work, and then do our Suzette stitches, making our way all the way down, remembering to always close off our Suzette stitch row with a half double crochet. And we're just going to keep repeating these two rows with no increases and no decreases until we don't have any more stitches left to work into, into the base. And then I'll meet you guys back so that we can seam everything together. So I've just made my way all the way around with my rows for my sleeve. I don't have any more stitches left to work into, into the base, and now we're ready to seam it all up. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is make sure that our work is flipped wrong side out so that all of our seams are along the same side. And now that our work is flipped, we're going to start by inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. My back panel just so happens to be my working yarn. And what we're going to do from here is pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. And this is going to be a single crochet seam, so the same seam that we did for the sides. So let's do this again. Start by finding that first available stitch into the front panel and insert your hook. And then into that same first stitch into the back panel, insert your hook into there and single crochet them together. 
Let's do just one more. Into that next stitch into the front panel, insert your hook, and then into that next stitch into the back panel, insert your hook, and single crochet. And we're going to keep doing this until we don't have any more stitches left, and then do a chain up of one and cut. So now that our sleeve is all seamed up, we're ready to get started on our cuff. And what we're going to do first is make sure that our work is now flipped right side out, meaning that all of our seams are along the inside. And we're going to be inserting our hook into any one of our side rows that we have on the bottom of our sleeve. We're going to insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. And all we're going to do from here is put one single crochet into every side row that we have. So let's start. We're going to start by inserting our hook into that same side row that we inserted our hook into. So mine just so happens to be a double crochet. Now, if yours is a side Suzette stitch, that's completely fine too. Just find that top loop, insert your hook with just one single crochet. Let's do the next one. My next side row is a side Suzette stitch row. If yours is a double, that's fine. Just find that top loop and single crochet into there. And that is it. We're going to continue to do this, making our way all the way around, slip stitch into that chain space that we made when we started this off, and then I'll meet you guys back. All right, so we have just finished up our single crochet row along the bottom of our sleeve. Now we're going to start working on the length of our cuff. So start by making a chain the length that we want our cuff to be. Now I want mine to be just about three inches or eight centimeters. So I'm going to start by making a chain of 15. And now that we have our chain, we are going to do a slip stitch row. So start by blocking off that last chain and do a chain one. And into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert with a slip stitch. So how we're going to do that is insert our hook into that chain. Should have two loops on our hook. So yarn over and pull through both of those loops. And a quick tip that I have when it comes to doing slip stitches, make sure that you're not accidentally tugging on your yarn after we finish every stitch, because otherwise the next row is going to be really hard to work into. So let's do this again. Find that next chain, insert your hook. Once we have two loops on our hook, all we're going to do is yarn over, pull through both loops, making sure we're not tugging on our yarn, and then moving on. So next chain, insert, pull through, and into the next chain we go. Continue to do this until we don't have any more chains left. Now that we've put one slip stitch into every stitch, we're going to need to slip stitch it into that next available stitch into the base to connect our first row. So start by finding that first available stitch. We're going to insert our hook into there. Once we have two loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over, pull through everything on our hook to secure that first row. Now to work our way up to the next row, we're going to slip stitch up just one stitch as well. Flip our work and now we're going to continue to do our slip stitches but now they're going to be within the back loop so that we can have some ribbing so we're going to find that last stitch from our previous row insert your hook into that back loop or the loop that's furthest away from us and once we have those two loops we're going to yarn over pull through everything remembering not to tug on our working yarn so let's do that again into that next stitches back loop insert your hook yarn over pull through everything next stitches back loop insert Pull through everything and continue to do this until you reach the end of the row. And now that we've put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, we're at the end of our row two. So just get started on our next row. Since we're along the outer edge, we're just going to chain one, flip our work, and then make your way down, putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch again. So insert, pull through, insert, pull through, and continue to put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Now that we've put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, we should be back at the base and I just want to connect it with you guys once more. So we're going to start by finding that next available stitch into the base and slip stitch into there to close off this row. And just to work our way up to the next row, we're going to find that next stitch into the base, insert your hook into there with another slip stitch, flip your work, and then make your way all the way down, putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And from here, we're just going to keep repeating these two rows until we don't have any more stitches left to work into into the base. Let me two guys back so that we can seam everything together. All right, I am back and I have just finished up working in with my cuff. I don't have any more stitches left to work into into the base and now we're going to seam it. And the seam is going to be an outside loop slip stitch seam. So we're going to want to make sure that our work is flipped right side out. We're all going to start by inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. 
What we're going to do from here is yarn over, pull through everything to secure, and then also do a chain one. Now we're going to find that first available stitch into the front panel, and we're going to insert our hook only in through that front loop or the loop that's closest to us. So this is my first available stitch right here. I'm going to insert my hook only in through that front loop. And then we're going to find that next available stitch within the back panel. This is mine right here. And then we're going to insert only in through that back loop. Once we have that, we're going to yarn over, pull through all three loops that's on our hook. Let's do that again. Insert your hook into that next stitch into the front panel, only inserting in through that front loop. We're going to find that next stitch into the back panel and insert only in through that back loop or the loop that's furthest away from us. We should get three loops on our hook. So yarn over, pull through all three loops, and let's just do one more. We're going to find that next stitch into the front panel and insert only in through the front loop. Find the next stitch into the back panel, only insert in through that back loop. Yarn over and pull through all three loops on our hook. And we're going to continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left. When we reach the end, do a chain up of one and cut, and then repeat everything that we just did here on the other side. We are back and we have just finished up both of our sleeves and both of our cuffs. Now we're going to start working on the bottom band. So the first thing we're going to want to do is make sure that our work is flipped right side out, meaning all of the seams that we have are along the inside. And we're going to start by inserting our hook into any one of our side rows along the bottom. What we're going to do from here is insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure, and we're just going to single crochet along the bottom pretty much the same way that we did the cuff. So let's just do the first few. We're going to start by inserting our hook into that same side row that we inserted our hook into. Mine is a side double crochet row, but if yours is a side Suzette stitch row, that's completely fine. Just find that top loop and insert with just one single crochet. Let's do the next one. My next one is a side Suzette stitch row. So find that top loop and single crochet once. From here, we're just going to continue to put one single crochet into every side row, making our way all the way around. Slip stitch into that chain space, and then I will meet you guys back. All right, we have just made our way all the way around with our single crochet row for the bottom, and we're now going to start working on the length of our bottom band. It's going to be done pretty much the same way that we did the cuff, so I'm just going to get the first row started off with you guys. So right after our slip stitch, we're going to start by making a chain the length that we want our bottom band to be. Now I want mine to be just about four inches or 10 centimeters. So I'm gonna start by making a chain of 20. So now that we have our chain, we're going to do our slip stitch row. So start by blocking off that last chain, do a chain one. Into that chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, we're gonna insert with a slip stitch. So insert. Once we have two loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over, pull through both of those loops, remembering not to tug tightly on our working yarn once we finish our stitch and continue to put one slip stitch into every chain. Now that we've put one slip stitch into every chain, just to connect it, we're gonna find that next available stitch into the base, and we're going to insert our hook into there with a slip stitch to connect. And from here, we're just gonna work our way up to the next row. So slip stitch into that next stitch into the base, flip our work, and then make your way down, putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. And at the end of the row, we're going to do a chain one, Flip our work and then put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, connecting it into the base the same way that we just did. And from here, we're just going to continue to repeat those two rows until we don't have any more stitches left. I'll meet you guys back so that we can seam our bottom band together. Right, so I'm back and I've just finished up my bottom band. We did our back loop slip stitch rows, making our way all the way around until we didn't have any more stitches left to work into into the base. And now we're ready to seam it. Now this seam is going to be the same seam that we did for the cuff, so let's first make sure that our work is flipped right side out. From there, we're going to be inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both the front and the back panel. We're going to yarn over, pull through everything on our hook, and since we already know how to do this seam, we're just going to do the first one. So let's start by finding that first available stitch into the front panel and inserting only in through that front loop. And next, let's find that next available stitch into the back panel and insert only in through that back loop. We should have three loops on our hook, so all we're going to do is yarn over and pull through all three loops, just like that. And we're going to continue to do this until we don't have any more stitches left. And when we don't, do a chain up of one and cut. 
All right, so we have just finished up seaming our bottom band and now we're going to finish up our whole piece with a collar. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is seam crochet along the entirety of our neck hole. So we're first gonna make sure that our work is flipped right side out and we're gonna insert our hook into any one of the stitches that we have along the back. It doesn't matter which one since it's all gonna come around full circle anyways. So I just insert my hook into this side double crochet. I'm gonna pull through to a chain up of one to secure. And all we're going to do from here is single crochet, making our way all the way around, starting with two single crochets into our side double crochet, and then one single crochet into our side Suzette stitch row. So since I first inserted my hook into the side double crochet, I'm gonna be inserting with two single crochets into there. If you started in your side Suzette stitch row, just put one single crochet into there. So just to show you guys mine, I'm gonna find that top loop into this side double crochet and insert with one single crochet. And then I'm gonna be doing one more into that same top loop. So a total of two single crochets into the side double crochet row. My next side row is the side Suzette stitch row. So I'm gonna find that top loop and insert my hook into there with just one. And from here, we're going to maintain this row sequence, making our way all the way around. We will have some regular stitches to work into when we're working up the side of our front panel. So I'm just gonna be putting one single crochet into each of those. And I'll meet you guys back once I reach the middle row within the front panel. All right, so I've single crocheted my way all the way down until I reached my middle row, which should be a side Suzette stitch row. All we're gonna do is the same thing that we've been doing. So we're just gonna put one single crochet into the top of that row, but I do wanna insert my stitch marker just into the top of that stitch so I can give you guys a more accurate number once we go in with our collar. But from here on out, it's gonna be the same. So two single crochet into every side double, one single crochet into every side Suzette stitch row, and then we're gonna make our way all the way up and around, slip stitch into that chain space, and then I'll meet you guys back. All right, so I've just made my way all the way around with my single crochet row for my collar, and now we're ready to get started on the fold over portion of our collar. So just to let you guys know my number, from my middle row, I have inserted my stitch marker into the 12th stitch on both sides, making sure that it's even or this is just about an inch right underneath my collarbone. Now from here, all we're gonna do is insert our hook into one of our stitch marker stitches. It doesn't matter which one. And we're gonna start by making a chain the length that we want our collar to be. Now I want mine to be just about an inch and a half or three centimeters. So I'm gonna start by making a chain of eight. Now that we have our chain, we're gonna block off that last chain and do a chain two. Now that chain two doesn't count as a stitch, that's just a turning chain, and now we're going to half double crochet into every chain. So start with the yarn over, and then into that chain that we blocked off, or the third chain from our hook, we're going to insert, yarn over, and pull through. Now that we have three loops on our hook, we're going to yarn over, and pull through all three. Let's do that again. Yarn over, insert your hook into that next chain, pull through, pull through all three, and continue to put one half double crochet into every chain. All right, and now that we've made our way all the way down with our half double crochet row, we're just going to connect it into the base, making sure that we're working towards the back. So what we're going to do is find that next available stitch. So this is mine right here. I'm gonna insert into there with a slip stitch, pretty much the same way that we did the cuff. We're gonna yarn over, pull through everything, and now our first row is attached. And we do need to work our way up to the next row, which is gonna be another half double crochet row. So how we're gonna do that is slip stitch up that next available stitch, yarn over, pull through everything, flip our work, and then make your way down, putting one half double crochet into every stitch. And now that we're at the end of our row two, do a chain two just to work our way up to the next row since we're along the end. Flip our work and then put one half double crochet into every stitch again and I'll meet you back once more to connect it into the base. And to close off our row three, we're just gonna connect it into that next available stitch into the base. So find that next stitch, insert your hook with a slip stitch. To work our way up to the next row, slip stitch into the next stitch, flip our work and then continue to put one half double crochet into every stitch. Keep repeating these two rows until we make our way all the way around to this other stitch marker that we have along the front and then do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so I am back and I just made my way all the way around with my collar. 
I did do a chain up of one and cut once I reached my stitch marker stitch, took out my stitch markers, and the last thing we're going to have to do is just weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. Hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Check us out on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. Those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye.